The objective comes pre-aligned in the cryo-optic holder, but if you want to install your own objective or take the objective out for any reason, you can follow this procedure to align the objective. So I've just assembled the objective here. Um, inside is the brass locking ring. It also has an adapter. The inside of the brass locking ring threads are SM1, so you can get an SM1 adapter to whatever microscope objective you have. The brass locking ring has two screws that you'll tighten down once you get in the objective in alignment. And then here's the objective. So we'll adapt those two together. And then we will put this into the cryo-optic holder. And then we'll use this tool, which has slots for the screws and then two grooves that align with grooves in the brass locking ring. And we'll start to coarsely adjust it by just twisting down. If the threads ever catch, you will want to back off so you don't get it stuck. So I'm checking to make sure that the aperture and objective don't crash. And once they're close enough, I can do the fine adjustment with this reference disc. So we'll image the metal on this reference disc. And this is calibrated such that the distance between the objective and the aperture is appropriate for when the system cools down. So I'll attach this and I'll continue to align it and I'll image the metal here. So you'll want to make sure that you don't put these tabs over the tabs in the aperture. So I'll put these tabs at 90 degrees from these tabs and you just push down and slide on. And then you can do this procedure under a separate optical axis using a spacer, or you can use it in your system in the line of your optics. But we'll continue to do the fine adjustment and we'll look to image onto the reference disk. So we'll go back a little bit, because when we tighten down, it'll go back into alignment and you can reach through the alignment tool and tighten. And then that brings it into focus. And now your objective is aligned and you can just take off the alignment disc and you're ready to image your sample and cool down. So now that we've assembled the cryo-optic, we're just gonna image our sample, which is an AFM calibration grading at room temperature before we cool down. So we've introduced a simple optical setup with a white light source and a CCD camera, um, and you'll have your own optical setup to image your sample in your space. So we'll bring the sample into focus by moving up the Z stage, and we've moved the frequency of the stage pretty low, and it's pretty easy to bring it into focus. So each trough width is three microns, and it looks pretty good, so now we're ready to cool down. Before we cool down, we'll move the Z stage all the way down, so as everything contracts, the aperture doesn't collide with your sample. When you're ready to cool down the system, you can load up the software, and the module for the cryo-optic will automatically be recognized as long as you have your UPS plugged in. The UPS is the other portion, and this is the backup power supply, which will keep the heater running in the event that the primary heater fails. So the four LEDs indicate that it's plugged into wall power, the battery in this unit is charged, it's connected to the computer, and then it's reading the temperature from the objective. This is also recorded in the software as well. The target temperature for the objective is automatically set to 310 Kelvin. So here the heater power is almost on full at five watts to achieve the 310 Kelvin set point. You can change this from anywhere between 280 Kelvin and 315 Kelvin if you would like. The other option that you can do is tune the temperature control. You can change the PID settings if you would like, but since this is operating in a small range, you really shouldn't have to do this. 
and then every three months the cryo-optic will say that you need to test the battery. In order to do so, the battery needs to already be at full charge, so showing a solid green, and then you can push that. But generally, you don't really have to look at this screen to manipulate anything. Within the system tab, you'll see the user thermometer, which is the objective temperature, and the user heater, which is the output power from the heater on the objective. And the graph also displays the user temperature. So this will also be monitored on the cooldown. So once this is all set and all the lights are green, you can push cooldown and you'll start to approach target temperature.